This, believe it or not, is cocaine. It's coke that's been chemically concocted to look like it's just part of exotic hardwood flooring. They made acres of this crafty coke wood. Somebody went to an awful lot of trouble trying to smuggle it out of South America. Now they are in a lot of trouble. This wooden plot's going down. I'm yelling timber. The mob reporter here with news of an ingenious narco plot to move almost nine tons of coke that failed when it was snagged at a remote border checkpoint in the Andes Mountains. And stick around, because this case also comes with something special for my suspicious viewers who always ask, what do cops really do with all that coke after they seize it? Well, they burn it, in this case at least, under the watchful eye of the United Nations. Let me tell you about it. It was New Year's Eve, December 31st, 2023, when the dope was found, cleverly hidden in a shipment of wooden floor tiles. The day before, a heavy transport truck loaded down with wood for export lumbered into the customs checkpoint at Tambo Quemado, between Bolivia and Chile. The truck was supposed to take it to a seaport in northern Chile, where the wood was scheduled to be shipped by sea through the Panama Canal to Belgium and then on to the Netherlands where the secret hidden inside would have been worth half a billion dollars. A thorough search of the truck the next day by Bolivia's drug squad uncovered this unusual stash. Now this isn't the typical way drugs are hidden in wood. Usually powder, crystals or bricks are jammed into hollow wood boards, then glued shut, like this coke found in Poland and this crystal meth in Australia. No, this was something else entirely, something far more devious. This was cocaine altered to make it look like a rubbery tile underpad beneath each plank or tile. It's modern day alchemy, it's clever camouflage. Bolivian authorities said two months of investigation led them to the truck. Authorities were very specific about how much coke they found, 8,776 kilograms and 200 grams. I asked them to clarify this was the weight of only the drugs and not the weight including the wood. They said the entire cargo weighed 22 tons, of which 8.7 tons were found to be coke. That's close to 40% of the entire weight. So if that's the case, the coke resin must be super dense. In any event, it's a lot for one load, even in South America. It was a big enough deal for the president of Bolivia to announce the seizure himself, calling it the largest coke find in the country's history. It was unveiled on January 5, 2024, with considerable fanfare in the city of Oruro, a mining town that was once the most important source of tin on earth. But the place has little to show for it now. The cargo was being moved by truck because Bolivia is a landlocked country. The truck was heading 125 miles due west of where it was stopped at the border to the port of Arica. That's a major exit point for Bolivian goods, so there's nothing intrinsically suspicious about the move. Movement. Six men were identified as suspects, four were arrested after nine police raids, and four properties were seized in various cities. The accused were paraded alongside the wood and coke stacks. Three are Bolivian and one Colombian. The Colombian was the main guy, authorities allege, responsible for mixing the cocaine into its unique form. He was described as an engineer who specializes in resins. He was called the big shot among those arrested. Under arrest alongside him were the truck driver, the alleged owner of the shipment, and the owner of the Bolivian Wood Export Company. That's this guy. Here he is in happier times, advertising his company's exotic hardwood products doors and floors, specializing in exotic woods indigenous to South America. Some of them look gorgeous. Just a few months before his arrest, he was enthusiastically promoting his company on a TV show, seen here. This case, of course, wasn't just the work of four guys. There is a large, well-sourced drug trafficking network behind it. Bolivia is a source country for cocaine. Along with Colombia and Peru, it forms the big three in terms of coca cultivation and cocaine production. 
The government didn't want all that tempting dope hanging around long. Just four days after announcing the stunning find, they hauled it to a remote field in a mountainous suburb, stacked it all up again, and torched it to the ground. It was carefully orchestrated and monitored. The load had been weighed at the time it was seized, and it was weighed again before its destruction to publicly show it was all still there. It was even field tested again on site to prove it was cocaine being burned and not something secretly slipped in to replace it. Bolivia's Special Force to Fight Drug Trafficking, as it's called, did the honors of guarding and destroying it. Local and national prosecutors and officials with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime all supervised its destruction, which was also witnessed by reporters. Everyone stood and watched it burn. What a sight. Imagine being downwind of this. Now I bet they did all that just to satisfy suspicious mob reporter viewers who seem certain that bent coppers are peddling every load they seized out of their police station's back door. Don't get me wrong, that has happened, and it will happen again, but likely not as often and in such bulk as some people think. So such transparency is a great policy and process to follow. They should do it everywhere. But the real reason for the theater around it is something else entirely. The Bolivian government needed to show the world it was a tough-on-narcos regime, active in the war on drugs. In September, you see, Bolivia was named and shamed by U.S. President Joe Biden. America declared Bolivia a major drug-producing country that failed to meet its obligations under international counter-narcotics agreements. And that came after Bolivia's former president accused the current administration of protecting narco networks. So something like this, uncovering an intriguing international drug plot of major proportions, destroying the dope publicly, and making arrests, was just what was needed by the Bolivian government, domestically and on the world stage. Lucky for them, the narcos lumbered right into it. Please make sure you're subscribed to my channel and notifications are turned to all. That gives you the best chance of catching every episode. Give this video a like and please leave a comment. And thanks for watching to the end.